Hello everyone. Well, we've reached that moment, a year, a year of this pandemic, a year since we were all working together at the university, a year since we had to make those dramatic decisions to, to close and to come and start working largely, not exclusively, largely from, from home. The country was first locked down uh, a year ago and we should just think back over the course of this year, which has been so challenging, difficult, dramatic in, in many ways. We should remember those people who have lost their lives over this period of time. And of course, I know that for many of you, you have lost people in your family. You've been telling me this. Winter has been really hard for everyone. The impact of COVID, of course, but also this tight lockdown, kids at home, not at school, the worry of looking after loved ones at a time of, of short days and cold and sometimes quite revolting weather. And it's been really, really hard for everyone. And I must confess, I've also found it really hard. And I'm sorry I haven't put out one of these videos earlier. I, I really should have done. With the rest of the senior team, we've taken on board the comments that you've been making in the uh, last uh, staff survey about wanting to have more connection about having to have more explanation, about having more engagement. And so we're planning to have more, more video and other ways of, of just explaining to you and sharing with you what's going on and, and hopefully finding routes to hear from you more as well. I just want to take this moment to thank you all yet again, but really, really seriously for the extraordinary amounts of hard work, dedication, commitment that you've all put in to helping to support the university over this period of time. The working approach that nearly all of us have had to take has been radically different from ones that we've had before. And in dealing with that, not only have we got through this with that commitment and, and high quality, but with really extraordinary resilience in different parts of the university, in different roles, resilience has been one of the most extraordinary factors through this from everybody. And I'm really grateful. I just want to say thank you so much. We know that our students have had a really hard time but they're overwhelmingly positive about the quality of the education they've had. And that comes down to our students and the way that they engage, the co-creation work that is so important in our education. And it also comes down to all those academic staff and support staff who've worked so hard to make sure that all of our learning objects are there for our students, that we are there for our students, and that we've engaged with our students. A year ago, we all asked, can we recommit ourselves to make sure that this year is a really successful one educationally for our students and, and, and everyone's done that and it's been absolutely fantastic. Also, our research continues to be extraordinarily successful. Amazingly, it's possible that the earned research income, the, the grants, the fellowships that people have won, this year could be even greater than previous years despite, despite the pandemic, which is an extraordinary achievement. You know, the quality of our research is so high, we are just completing the submission to the Research Excellence Framework, the results of which I'm sure will demonstrate yet again just how successful, how brilliant the research is across this university. In the course of that, I discover an amazing fact. You know, one in eight of our academics on research contracts is on some form of competitively won fellowship. It's an extraordinary number and, and real testimony to the brilliance actually that we have in our university. Of course, some areas of the university have really, really, really had to face hard times. Uh, our colleagues in, in conferences, in retail, cafe bars and restaurants, as in those sectors across the whole country have been hit really hard. For our commercial income over the course of this year, we are probably going to be something like 25 million pounds down. It's been a real hit and we know how important that our commercial income has been over the years, not only providing jobs and extra income for our students, which is a really important part of what they do, but also in generating monies that we can reinvest in, in the university as a whole. But despite these real challenges, what we've seen from all of our colleagues in those spaces is again, resilience and remarkable flexibility, a willingness to work across different areas, supporting the university as a whole, whether in or out of furlough, Thank you so much for what you've done as well. Overall, our financial plan 
uh, about which we worked collectively so hard last year, about which we worried so hard uh, and so long over the summer and through the year. Our financial plan's going okay. We're going to get through this pandemic in the way that collectively we committed that we would do when we went into it a, a year ago. I guess for me, one of the the biggest learnings over the course of this last 12 months has been that the importance of well-being, which in a sense when things are going well, when things are, as it were, normal, you can take it really for granted. Getting that really strong and clear home uh, uh, work balance, that life balance, which can be such a challenge sometimes. Finding ways to keep engaged with and support our family and friends in all they do, including their well-being as well looking after each other. One of the extraordinary things about our university community, especially evident in the last 12 months, has been what people have done for local communities, for local people, in volunteering and in support. And I know people, people, you write to me and you say, oh, it's just a small thing. It's really, whatever you've done is not a small thing. If it has impacted on someone's life, improved it, it is gold. And, and again, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you also, of course, for those people who are going to be working over at Easter break, uh, those in residential life and security, porters, cleaners, maintenance teams, many others who are going to be working over the period where, where we are largely closed. Thank you for doing that. And for everybody, we must take some rest. We must take some downtime. And if you can't take it over that Easter week, please make sure that you do take it subsequently. We all need and deserve some downtime. We are coming up to that Easter break. And for me, I'm looking forward to a few things. I'm, I'm looking forward to spending a bit of time in our vegetable beds. Um, the the pre-season work uh, is always really intense, of course, at this time of year. And my goodness me, I've got a lot of weeding I need to get done. I'm looking forward to going for some, some long walks on hopefully lovely sunny days. I don't mind if it's not warm, just please let it be lovely and sunny. I'm looking forward to spending some time with the family. I'm uh, looking forward to um, a few more points on the Premier League table for the mighty Aston Villa. But the most exciting thing of all for, for me over the course of the Easter period is um, a puppy. We are getting a puppy. Alfie is his name. He's a uh, Labrador. Uh, he will be eight weeks old now. So we'll be getting him uh, when he is still full of life. Um, I wonder how I'm going to get good night's sleep <laughs> when the puppy comes into the house. But uh, for those of you who are dog lovers, um, you know the excitement of having a puppy in the house and what that will mean. So uh, I'm really looking forward to welcoming Elfie. I hope you all have a great break. We're not there yet, but we're nearly there. I hope you have a great break. I hope you are finding a way to mark this, this one year commemoration of the pandemic in, in whatever way feels appropriate for you and your family. Best wishes to you all, and as I said earlier, we do promise to restart better and more regular communication with you all. Thank you.